This video is brought to you by BoardGamePrices.com, the best place to find board games online. Kia ora koto, and welcome to Star Wars Outer Rim in about 3 minutes. Review copy used. It is a game for 1 to 4 players. There is a solo AI opponent. Playing time's around 2 hours. It's a moderately complex game. It's not my fault. I didn't mean to get stopped by that Imperial Patrol, and I certainly didn't want to dump that cargo into space. Look, if the Syndicate wants their money back, I can get it for them. I just need a bit more time. You've heard all these excuses before and you don't care. A job is a job, and the Warren said dead or alive. Who's next on the bounty board? You win by being the first player to accumulate 10 fame points. Fame is gained by completing goals and missions. Competitive. Only one player can be the most space famous. Narrative. This game comes with a lot of encounter cards. Dice. But most of the important actions require dice rolls. Player turn. One of the first things to note about this game is that you have a lot of information on your character display. There's your fame score, personal combat ability, health, jobs, money, gear, and reputation. Reputation can be positive, neutral, or negative for each of the four factions in the game. You also have a ship display, which has your speed, ship combat ability, ship health, cargo, mods, and crew. Each turn has three main phases. The first, you can either recover all damage you have taken, gain 2,000 credits, or move your ship. Then you have the action phase, where you can use actions from your character or cards. And if you're on a planet, you can buy something from the face-up card displays. When you buy a card from the display, the matching patrol ship moves the number of spaces shown towards you. Patrols stop your movement if you do not have a positive reputation with them. You can also attack them for rewards at the cost of reputation with that faction. You can also deliver cargo if you are in the right location. Finally, there is the encounter phase. You can draw an encounter card for the planet you are on, or a waypoint encounter if you are in deep space. Alternative Alternatively, you can choose to turn over one of the face down encounter tokens on the board or encounter a face up one. You then check the card index for the number matching that shown on the contact and follow its instructions. If you have a bounty on that character, you can choose to fight them instead. You take one damage for each hit they roll and capture them if you score more hits than they do. If you recruit or capture someone, remove their token from the board. Finally, there are job cards, which require you to go to a location and pass a series of skill checks. If you have the skill in question, you need to roll one success on two dice. If you don't, you need to roll the critical hit symbol on two dice. And if you have the skill twice, any symbol counts as a success. Why would you like this game? Obviously, the Star Wars theme is a big deal for a lot of people. And this game executes that theme really well. You'll feel like a smuggler or a bounty hunter operating on the rim. And the jobs, cards, and equipment all reinforce that. There's also a real sense of progression as you start with a rust bucket ship, but you can buy newer ones and get better gear and then even upgrade your ships. Each of the eight characters also feels different and starts with different goals and playstyles. Lando's far better suited to swindling and smuggling, while Boss gets sells at fighting. And there's a bucket load of cards in the game. Something I've been critical of FFG in the past is putting out games that feel like a starter box. The Outer Rim actually feels like a full game. The best thing about this game is that it is a sandbox experience. If you want to turn Boba Fett into a back to tank salesman, you can. However, this game is more of a romp than a tense mental exercise. It's far more about the journey than the final goal. Random events and other players collecting bounties on your crew can destroy a lot of plans. And some of the components are not quite up to scratch in my mind. The player boards in my copy came warped, there are only 6 dice to share, and the money tokens are very basic. I'll be using dice from X-Wing and money from Xia to supplement the game. And speaking of Xia, if you want an even bigger and more involved space sandbox game, check that one out. And if you think Malcolm Reynolds is cooler than Han Solo, try Firefly. Star Wars Outer Rim. You can shoot first. If you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and check out our Patreon.